Hi and welcome. In this recording I will explain the connection between Bitcoin, Litecoin, crypto coins and the US dollar currency which can be used uh, across the world and has been in use for many years. So first of all the uh, culture of uh, cryptocurrencies is more and more accepted by businesses as you can see in this picture but also by the government. If you have uh, tracked some of the new messages coming even from uh, here the uh, investor.gov website in fact I'll go ahead and navigate to it uh, where the government is uh, trying to help us understand the risks involved with Bitcoin currency uh, but yet comments like these ones down here about IRS treating Bitcoin as property really being very encouraging to making cryptocurrencies mainstream. So what I will do next is I will show you what accounts you have to create uh, in order to be a part of the cryptocurrency uh, process, uh, also what they do, and how uh, to exchange cryptocurrency into real uh, or the uh, uh, fiat currency in the US. So we're going to start with what everyone is familiar with, which is a checking account. Now a checking account, which I happen to hold with Fifth Third Bank, happens to be uh, a storage of the US fiat currency. I can now write a check from a paper checkbook. I can of course use a transfer funds or, or make payments. So everyone is familiar with this. This is our common ground. From here though, the question is, how does money arrive into a checking account? And uh, perhaps what are the risks involved with that as well? So let's start with the fact that there are two ways of gaining or acquiring cryptocurrency. The first way is to simply buy it. Now this is not technically challenging, uh, but uh, let's show how this would happen. So to start with, in order to buy cryptocurrency, you can go in Canada to an ATM machine, which already uh, does operate with cryptocurrency, or for now, you can uh, log in to a Coinbase account. So Coinbase.com would allow you to create an account that uh, is then linked to a checking account, like in my uh, example here. So I can now buy Bitcoin or I can sell Bitcoin. And uh, the Coinbase account really makes it very flexible to um, to manipulate uh, the cryptocurrency. But it does an important thing, which is it provides identification. So in order to create the account, I actually had to uh, confirm my checking account with Fifth Third. So these steps uh, bring uh, uh, legitimacy to uh, the process. So my Coinbase account is going to be important for me because this is the base camp. This is where my um, uh, account uh, is going to receive Bitcoin uh, or, or other coins. So let's take a quick look at this. Uh, let me see. We're going to start by uh, looking at my wallet and uh, So we'll start by looking at my wallet and you can see that currently I have just 0 0.003 of a Bitcoin which gives me about $1.40 and I can specify addresses which uh, allow me to receive coins. So let's go ahead and uh, take a quick look uh, at those. Okay, so we're looking at addresses which I created on this account and here's an address which will receive the payments from mining the coins. Now this particular address can be publicly uh, specified and uh, this address will receive the coins. Okay, so this Coinbase account allows me to purchase Bitcoin right from my checking account. And this is the easiest way to actually acquire Bitcoins. And then you may choose to hold them so that as the value increases, you can then uh, sell them. That's one way of acquiring 
bitcoins. Another way is if someone just gives you the coins. As an example, let me uh, navigate here to um, my web page and uh, if you were to look for the uh, support link, you'll find that I have a, a donate button and so you can just donate uh, bitcoins to someone. Now the second way of acquiring bitcoins is by mining. And this is where the technical level of bitcoins increases. So let me show you what that's all about. So we will go back to the Coinbase account and this time I'm going to create an address and this address is going to be like an account number, a receiving end. Now my task is to generate uh, the, the cryptocurrency and you generate the cryptocurrency by running a special program program which connects you to other computers and together you are a supercomputer that is uh, able to track transactions put them together approve them basically your computer becomes part of the banking system and as a thank you for being part of this banking system you receive a small part of the newly generated coins. So this process is called mining. Now in order to mine, first of all you're going to have to sign up with a mining group. So individuals no longer really have enough computing power to mine by themselves. So instead I have an account with a Script Guild and uh, important note here that uh, there are two kinds of cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin is one which is supported by a SHA-256 algorithm and uh, there is uh, a longer history of this algorithm within this uh, process which means that you have to have very powerful systems, specialized systems which do the mining. And the second type of currency is built on the script algorithm which actually can still be done uh, on uh, regular computers uh, so uh, that script algorithm is where uh, there's just a lot of mining that can be done by individuals so you create an account here and then once you have an account you will receive a URL like this one and then you create users or workers which generate or mine the coins for you. So once you created an account on this particular system you then have to start a mining program on your computer. How do we do that? Well you have to install a program on Windows or on uh, Linux or on Mac and this program is going to have information about who you are mining with, what is the mining group, and what is your username. Now this is once in a lifetime where you would like to share your username and password with everyone in the world. Because if everyone types in this address, uh, all of that will be credited to my account. Okay, so moving on, we have uh, the program itself called Miner D. We are going to use a script algorithm and we'll go ahead and execute it against uh, the specific URL with our credentials. I'll go ahead and do that. So now that it's running, I can see that my computer has four CPUs. Now this happens to be a Macintosh computer of uh, uh, medium strength. And these four CPUs are able to mine or run the encryption software at the speed of about seven, six, seven, eight thousand hashes per second. So that seems like fairly fast. If you have a computer that's two, three years old, you'll be mining more uh, like at a one kilohash per second. Together, I'm probably mining around 30 kilohashes per second. You can see uh, earlier this system was mining at 22 kilohashes per second, uh, which was measured by the actual um, uh, stratum that we were connected to. But 
if we just scroll down a little bit, you can see that I have another system that mines at 263 kilo hashes and yet another one at 69. Now these other two are actually not computers at all. They are called ASICs or devices specialized. They were created just for that one reason to mine a currency. You can see the difference that those ASICs basically mean the same as 10 computers fairly modern computers mining at the same time. Now these ASICs though cost, this one costs about $40 and this one costs about $180. So there is um, a big business in building these specialized devices which draw far less power, about 8 watts. This one right here draws about 8 watts to run uh, the scripting mechanism. Okay. So with this in place, I'm going to stop the mining program and we're going to move on. Uh, as you can see, we are mining, we are participating in the distributed network, and now this particular uh, system uh, mines across multiple coins at the same time, or uh, multiple coins uh, throughout the day. And um, there's a benefit to it because there are quite a few cryptocurrencies today and some of them are worth more, some of them are worth less. So the system basically makes it makes the best out of uh, these uh, situations. But from here, notice that I can go to my wallet and I can specify the address. Now the address that I would like to have the coins sent to once they're mined is this right here, which is the same as the uh, Coinbase address we create right here. Look at the end here, SHV, and so SHV goes right here. So what I am doing right now within this particular um, mining system, I am mining all kinds of coins, but then converting them into the Bitcoin at the current rate. And whenever there is enough to be a 0.01 of a Bitcoin, I send it to my wallet. I also mine the Dodge coin or the dog coin, I'm sorry, and the LTC coin, which is the, the light coin. Now, I can log into my dog coin vault, and I have about 15,000 coins on this account, and I can show you what my uh, LTC wallet looks like. And notice that this wallet is not online uh, through a cloud-based or web-based uh, system. This wallet actually exists locally on the computer, and whenever I turn on this program, it has to sync all the transactions that were ever made uh, within the Bitcoin system. Okay, so that's how we can store uh, the coins once we've mined them. Now, the mining of these coins can be observed in Allendale, Michigan at Grand Valley State University, where uh, Eric Cunnan, uh, the Emerging Technologies Coordinator, uh, helped me uh, create a display within the technology showcase and we have students visiting the area so feel free to stop by and look at the uh, uh, mining ASICs. Uh, I'll show you what they look like here momentarily. Let me just uh, find the picture. Oh, there it is. So this is what the ASIC looks like. So it has a USB connection, its own power and um, it does the coin mining. This particular ASIC is a picture of uh, this one right here, which is uh, through Grid C, a company uh, that uh, produces these specialized devices. Okay, so Script Guild is the website which is going to put together a number of miners. So a number of people who are willing to use their computers in this banking system. And together, within some kind of a pool, they're mining a specific coin. And then the benefits or the coins that are found are being shared. Now again, there's no finding that actually is taking place. All they're doing is putting together transactions through from the network into blocks. And then running uh, encryption software to find or to crack a difficult uh, equation and uh, maybe every 10 minutes or so this equation is broken by someone uh, on the network and this is how 
we can slow down the amount of transactions which are approved uh, on the entire network and therefore we're building a ledger a set of approved transactions and that's how people know that they actually have gotten paid okay so with this in place we can go back to the coinbase account and as the cryptocurrency arrives here our um, wallet balance will increase and then we can go ahead and send the money uh, by selling the Bitcoin and at the same time we're, we are uh, connecting to the checking account where we actually get the US currency. So back in the checking account we can see transactions coming from Coinbase and uh, then we can spend uh, the cash. Okay, so looking back at the checking account, let's press refresh. Uh, let's see what happened here. Honey, did you buy something recently? An airplane or something? All right, we'll, we'll figure this out in just a minute. Um, so now that money uh, can be on the checking account, uh, we, of course, are familiar about how to use it. So hopefully this gave you an idea about the connection between cryptocurrencies, how to acquire them, either by buying, receiving them as a gift, or mining them, how to collect them within a wallet like the Coinbase system, and then how through a checking account you can receive the value of this particular currency in US dollars. Thank you very much.